Good morning, everyone. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. We praise and thank the Lord for this very morning. In this house, God is awesome. We praise and worship the Lord because He is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Are you ready to praise God? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's do it now. Woo!
Lord, for you are good. Your love endures forever. Yes, Lord. We acknowledge your presence, God. Here in this place, Lord, we know that you are here because this is an awesome place to worship your holy name, God. We thank you, Jesus, for being with us today. And be the power of your Holy Spirit. Speak to us right now, Lord. Speak to us right now. And all of your people, your homes, all of the people in this country, all of the people throughout the world, speak to us right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, your presence, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh. Found in your hands, fullness of joy, every
God's precious Son you
Thank you so much again for this day that the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad in it. It's time to all and towards the Lord and now give our undivided attention as we listen to the message this morning. But before anything else, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have gathered us again, Lord. This wonderful opportunity, Lord, and privilege to serve you and to love you and to worship you, God, in spirit and truth. I pray, God, that us. You are now moving in the midst of us that the Holy Spirit, your anointing, will keep us, Lord, until the end of this online Sunday worship service. And thank you, God, for your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. So the theme for today's message is about developing the mind of Christ. As we begin, let me ask you this question. What are you allowing to develop in your mind, especially during this time we are in? Is the global pandemic due to COVID-19 and its effect that drastically changed people's lifestyle, affecting livelihood, travel, tourism, businesses, banking, economy, employment, education, affecting every sector of society, affecting the rich and the poor alike? You know, and assuring the new normal, creating a negative mindset or a positive mindset in you. Remember, all problems are illusions of the mind. And according to Marcus Aurelius, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Yes, there are many things that are beyond our control. But what we allow to develop in our minds is always something within our control. According to Aristotle, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Your mind is the powerhouse of your lives. Your mind is a powerful tool. What you think has great impact you know, in the way you live. The Bible says that as a man thinks, so is he. In other words, we are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. So this morning, my fellow brothers and sisters, allow me to encourage you to develop the mind of Christ instead of developing a pessimistic mind that could be brought about by the outside events going on. Let's focus our minds in developing the mind of Christ. The Bible teaches us that the mind of Christ is active, not idle. For an idle mind is the workshop of the devil. The mind of Christ is lowly, a humble mind. The mind of Christ is pure, and the Word of God teaches us to always think what is pure. The mind of Christ is responsive to do the will of the Father. And the mind of Christ is single-minded. He is focused in obeying His Father's will. And the mind of Christ is peaceful. Praise God. And Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You know, other translations use the word attitude or mindset instead of just, you know, the word mind. Now, reading from the NIV, it says, In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And also read from the Living Bible, your attitude should be the kind that was shown us by Jesus Christ. So the mind of Christ, I mean, so the mind speaks of, you know, our attitude or mindset. Now the following verses 
of Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8 says, No, it reveals the man Christ in here. It says there, Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the death, even death on the cross. Meaning, Jesus emptied himself of all the glory. He made himself nothing. He gave up his divine privileges without, without renouncing or diminishing his deity. But only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity and took the likeness of men, the very nature of a servant, and he humbled himself even further, going so far as actually to die a criminal's death on a cross. Now the mind of Christ is demonstrated in what he did. His attitude to humility and a mindset to obey you know, the will of the Father even unto a criminal's death on a cross. Now, therefore, you know, let us not be sidetracked by what is going on today. Yes, right. But stay focused in developing the mind of Christ. Now, let me share with you three stages or three steps in developing the mind of Christ. First is, what we call the beginning stage, that is, we read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Or from the Living Bible, it says, Let heaven fill your thoughts. Don't spend your time worrying about things down here, right? You know, this is about the will principle. Now, will is the whole man active. And we cannot just give away or give up our will. According to C.S. Lewis, the great divorce, there are only two kinds of people in the end. Those who say to God, the will be done, and to the, and those to whom God says in the end, the will be done. All that are in hell choose it. Without that self-choice, there could be no hell. No soul that seriously and constantly desires joy will ever miss it. Those who seek, find. Those who knock it, it is open. Now, with the will, you decide, you choose, or determine the focus of your mind. Jim Watcher said, God isn't about making good things happen to you or bad things happen to you. He's all about you making choices, exercising the gift of free will. God wants you to have, a good, to have good things and a good life, but He won't gift wrap them for you. You have to choose the action that lead you to that life. Right. Know that the opposite of will is instinct or unwilled reactions. Decision making is not a problem with animals. They react instinctively. But with human beings, you know, the will is a part of your mind over which you have control. The will enables you to obey in spite of your feelings or intuitions. Within 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that, sit, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And here, you know, the Apostle Paul is implying that, that we can control our will to make it obedient to God. You know, to take our will and to say, the will be done. So giving God your will is the first step, you know, to develop the mind of Christ. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. You must will that your will is surrendered to God, huh? So earthly things will only gratify the flesh, but not the spirit. And the worst of it, it is only for a moment a passing pleasure and does not give lasting satisfaction. The heart that is gratified with earthly things will look for more. 
but the things from above, the things of God, are the true source of our lasting satisfaction in life that gives us contentment. Jesus Christ is our example. He said, I came to do my Father's will. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, while in agony and praying, you know, he controlled his emotion and submit his will to obey the Father's. His emotion cried out, let this cup pass over me. But he submitted his will to the Father and therefore said, not my will, but thy will be done. You know, the will of God will never lead you where the grace of God cannot keep you. you now, from this experience of Jesus, we often see that our, you know, our emotion takes over our will. And then at the end, you know, of the day, we find ourselves enduring the consequences of our stubborn will. Therefore, the first step, you know, to develop, to developing the mind of Christ is to set our minds, you know, on things above. Uh, the second step to developing the mind of Christ is uh, allowing God to renew your mind. You know, this is what, what I call the growing stage. Developing the mind of Christ is a process, a growth process, and it takes time to experience this. Romans chapter 12 verse 2, we also read, says there, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His per good, pleasing, and perfect will. As Christians, we live in constant state of renewal. After surrendering your will to God, you will continue to change by undergoing a constant renewal process like a river that continually flows to the ocean. John chapter 7 verse 38, we read again, you know, Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, after we put our faith in Jesus Christ, there are now rivers of living water that will flow from within us. Hallelujah. We will never be thirsty again and we will never run dry because it is, you know, a river of living water. You know, by comparison, a pond becomes stagnant, but river flows. Pond puddles, but river become oceans. So likewise, you know, we have to grow in Christ until our growth is enormous to develop the mind of Christ. We must constantly grow by constantly renewing our minds. You know, transformation is the product of renewal. And the truth embedded in the Word of God is a renewing agent that causes renewal that ends in our transformation. A constantly transforming life is a sign of continuing growth that develops the mind of Christ. Now we look up to Christ as our example. We read in Luke chapter 2 verse 52, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. And I've read a short illustration about a family who went for a trip. They were driving through an orange plantation where as far as the eyes could see, orange trees were loaded with fruits. When they stopped for breakfast, the father ordered for, you know, an orange juice. I'm sorry, the waiter said, I can't bring you orange juice. Our machine is broken. At first, the father was dumbfounded. They were surrounded by thousands of oranges and he knew there was oranges in the kitchen because their plate were garnished with slices of oranges. Now what was the problem? No juice? Oh, hardly. They were surrounded by thousands of gallons of orange juice. The problem was they had become dependent on a machine to get it. Right? Now, Christians are sometimes like that. They may be surrounded by Bibles in their homes, but if something should happen to the Sunday morning preaching service, they would have no nourishment for their souls. The problem is that lack of spiritual food, but many Christians haven't grown enough to know how to get it for themselves. 
Now, for us to develop, you know, the man of Christ, we must learn how to nourish ourselves individually. Renewing the mind is a personal experience. Personally knowing the truth in God's word does not renew others, but you, right? Renewing the mind like growth is a process that requires self-discipline and a strong commitment to follow through. Therefore, the second step to, or the second stage to developing the mind of Christ is continuous renewing of the mind. Now let's go to the third stage, stage or step. You know, it is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. And let me read again to you. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. The third step here, you know, in developing the mind of Christ is prepare your mind, you know, for action. You know, the King James Version says, Wherefore, geared up the loins of your mind. Now, the reference of this verse is the long flowing robes people wore in the first century. People could not run or move quickly in such dress. Now, to do anything in you know, athletic, a person had to lift the edge of the robe and tuck it under the belt to free the lower legs for action. This was called girding up the robe. Now, Peter admonished us to prepare our minds for actions. The mindset of Christ when the time came for him to fulfill his mission on earth was to do something, you know, to establish the kingdom of God. Let's read Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now here Jesus is saying or stating His mission on earth. He is anointed you know, by the Father for action to do something. And in Matthew chapter 4, 23, you know, we see, you know, the action that what Jesus did. And Jesus went about, see, you see, the Bible said, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. So Jesus went around doing good. Jesus was girded up for action. Action is a sign of life and growth. Now, as we remain faithful in doing our ministry, we are, you know, copying the mindset of Christ. We are copying, or you know, His attitude. We are copying Him actually. You know, we are following His action. For Philippians chapter two, verse five says, "Have the mind, have the same mindset." As Christ Jesus. You see, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. You know, as we prepare our minds for action, it gives us experience that gives us knowledge developing the mind of Christ in us. You know what? Dormancy is idleness, and in the spiritual sense, an idle mind is the workshop of the devil, right? We must gird our minds for action so that we may be qualified for the work of the Lord. Only those who are ready for action can be mobilized and qualified to do the work of God. Like for example, if you are part of, of a basketball team, and if you are seated on a bench while others are playing, it means you are ready to play anytime you are called in to replace another player, right? You can sit on the bench if you are not ready to play, and you will not be qualified to play, and you will never be called to play. You can sit on the bleachers, you know, as spectators, but not as a player. So these are now the three stages, you know, to develop the mind of Christ. First is to set your mind on things above, not on earthly things below. Be mindful of the things of God. Seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
This is the beginning stage. An earthly mind, unless surrendered to the Lord, can never develop the mind of Christ. We read in Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 6, you know, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Hallelujah. And the second step is renewing of the mind, and this is the growing stage. Developing the mind of Christ is a growth process by constantly renewing your minds with the Word of God. You know, the lies the devil planted in, in our unregenerate minds must be renewed and replaced by the truth of God. Now, God placed rivers of living water within us, and like rivers that become oceans, we may grow deeper, higher, and wider in God. And the third step, or the uh, third sta stage, is the qualified stage. We are preparing our minds for action, to be ready, for, to be qualified for the work of God. Now, as we participate in the works of Christ, we develop the mind of Christ. We are following and copying the mind of Christ. The Bible says, let this mind of Christ be in you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Remember that your mind is a powerful tool, as I said a while ago. If you do not use it for God, the devil will use it to destroy you or others. Therefore, let us protect our minds from the attack of the devil. We must put on the helmet of salvation over our minds. And, the only, and that's the only way for us to protect it from the influence of the devil. You know, it's for us to develop the mind of Christ. So today, let us put on, you know, always put in mind what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admir admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Why? Because these are the things that characterize the mind of Christ. So let this mind of Christ be in you this morning. Amen. May during this pandemic, you know, hallelujah, we'll stay focused and pray to have the mind of Christ. As I said, that's the only way to protect our minds from the attack of the devil, especially in times like this, is to develop the mind of Christ in us. Hallelujah. Let us pray. The Lord, thank you for making us realize today how important our minds are. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, that it is possible by your grace and by your anointing and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to develop the mind of Christ, to have the mind of Christ, to think like Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. As, as what the Bible says, no, let this mind of Christ be in you. Hallelujah. So God, today, in the name of Jesus, I know that there are many things that are going through in our minds, oh God. The hardship, the difficulties, Lord, of, of our time today, sometimes, Lord, are creating a negative mindset in us, oh Lord. But this morning, based from your words again, Lord, hallelujah, based from your promises, oh God, based from the words of laughter, that we can develop the mind of Christ, that positive mindset, Lord, hallelujah. We can conquer because that's what you uh, that's what you promised the Lord. Hallelujah. So Father, help us to put our thoughts, every uh, imagination, Lord, under captivity, Lord, and to make it obey Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And so this morning, oh God, I pray and I rebuke, Lord, Lord in Jesus' mighty name, oh God, hallelujah. Whatever is negative running through in our minds or control our minds this morning, Lord, you know, I pray in the name of Jesus, set your people free. Deliver them from any bad thoughts, oh God. Deliver them from any hopelessness that is dictated by the mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke that uh, uh, mind that produces fear, mind that produces anxiety, mind that produces, Lord, worries. In the mighty name of Jesus, and let it be 
place by a peaceful mind, a humble mind, mind that is great for action, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you, God. Amen. Help us to realize today or this morning, God, that you have given us the power to control what is going on in our minds and to protect our minds from the attack of the enemy by putting on the helmet of salvation. Know that we are saved. Know that we have salvation in Jesus Christ. Know that God is our salvation and the strength of our lives. So God, today in Jesus' mighty name, protect the minds of your people, O Lord. In Jesus' name, let them follow these uh, three stages, O God. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen, Lord. To set their minds on things above and not on things below, their Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, Lord. Amen. To set their mind, to surrender their will to you, their God. Hallelujah. And Lord, thirdly, Lord, help us, Lord, to gear up our minds. Help us, Lord, to make ready our mind, Lord, to have our mind ready for action in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yes, we are called, Lord, to do works for you, glory and for your honor. Help us, Lord, to be ready, to be qualified in the mind, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your presence this morning. We thank God for your faithfulness and goodness, oh God, enabling us to do the work of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that in you, Lord, we have the strength to do your will, Father God, and you enable us to do your will in this last days dear God. Lord, thank you Father God, we give you praise glory and honor in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So God bless you church and again I pray that within this week you know we will continue to uh, desire and stay focused you know in developing the mind of Christ in us and I said that's the only way you know, for us to be protected from any deception and lies of the devil that we often hear even nowadays. Hallelujah. So this morning, let us pray. I mean, let us get ready, you know, for the Lord's Supper. You know, how time flies. It seems like only yesterday we had this communion, you know, and but now here we are again, you know, as a body of Christ, as followers of Jesus Christ, we will participate in the Lord's Supper in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us read the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 17. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The set of man will go just as is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the son of man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the, of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, Truly I tell you, I will drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you again for this opportunity that we can be together, Lord, as a family of God to participate in the Lord's Supper. We thank you, Lord, for what it represents. Fellowship with the body of Christ, spiritual renewal, forgiveness of sins, and healing of the body, mind, and soul. So, Lord, this morning, thank you for making us worthy to partake of the symbol of your body and your blood. And thank you, God, for the anointing and the blessings to all of us who are participating now to drink and to eat the symbol of your body and blood. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your body broken for us. By faith, Lord, we will partake of it and receive the promise of healing to those who are sick in body in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for your promise that by your stripes we were healed. And now, God, by faith, I declare to those who are not feeling well, to those who are sick of this virus today, heal them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for there is power in the name of Jesus. Let's eat the bread. And Lord, also will drink the symbol, the symbol of your blood. Lord, thank you that even now we can declare that especially during this pandemic time, let your people be under the covering of your precious blood in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Let every household be under the covering of the Lamb of God. By the blood of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's drink it all. Let's praise Him this morning. Thank you, God. We bless your name, O oh God. We thank you for giving your life for us, Lord. And through your death, we have life. And through your blood, poured out that day in Calvary, we will have our redemption. Thank you. And we look forward, Lord, for your coming. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Once again, God bless everyone and enjoy the rest of the day.